Thank you very much. It is now my honor and privilege to invite you, Mr. President, to address the newly sworn in senior government officials and the nation at large. Mr. President, sir. Good morning, colleagues. Um, I do recognize, just to pay due recognition, if I may say so, to the Republican Vice President, uh, who is here. I know she's been traveling in the last couple of days. Um, thank you for being able to attend this activity. I wish to also recognize the ministers that are here, a number of them, and thank you, colleagues, for finding time to be here. And uh, indeed, the provincial minister as well, uh, acting secretary to the cabinet and your team. Um, I see a sizable team from there. Um, obviously, colleagues from State House, other ministries, permanent secretaries, I see some of them. And, um, and uh, obviously um, others that are here, and um, members of the press, but um, to the two colleagues that are being appointed uh, today into these critical positions. Um, I wish to welcome you once more to this your house, uh, State House, um, to witness this swearing in of um, senior colleagues in government, uh, two distinguished ladies uh, that are being sworn in today in your own individual rights. Uh, you have followed career paths that, um, uh, you know, uh, you serve the country in different uh, roles. And today you are given yet additional responsibilities to serve this country. And uh, you sit there not just because um, you are the names you carry, but you sit there because of your capabilities. And, and the good news is that uh, you are both women, and I think this is important. I'm sending a message out there. Um, but um, the, the message more important to, than just being women is capable women. I want to emphasize that point to the media, capable citizens who happen to be women. And uh, it's a pleasure to be swearing in these colleagues uh, today. So let me address them individually in their roles. Then I'll be able to do justice a little bit today. I want to emphasize one or two things that I feel the nation needs to get back to the rails. Uh, because I do follow a lot of what's going on out there uh, I read a lot um, what's going on out there. So, uh, Madam Duffin, uh, Lisa Linawachimuka, you are going to the teaching service. Very, very important, extremely important uh, function. You are going there to chair the teaching service commission. And um, you have a huge task. You have a huge task to ensure that we change together. We change the teaching service, the way teachers work, who are they, where are they, that people's students are getting what they go to school for. You have a major task to do that. This government has pronounced itself very, very clearly what it wants to see in the education sector particularly that education is the best inheritance for any child. I would not wish any child to seek to get millions of kwacha from parents without education. Those millions of kwacha will evaporate like morning dew in a short while, in many cases. Not in all cases, but in many cases, because something will be missing. The toolkit for
for that child without education, that toolkit is not there. So it doesn't quite matter, to be honest. I've come to know in life now. It doesn't matter what else is available. The barest minimum and the best is education for a child. That's what we all got from the village to stand here. So this government has pronounced itself very clear that our children must get the best education. The standards are in a different area. We'll be addressing that some other day. But the environment, learning, teaching environment, a lot of that will weigh on your shoulders and that of your colleagues in the Ministry of Education. I see the PS here. I don't know if both PSs are here. Both of them are here. Those are partners in our quest to save the people of Zambia. Minister is not here? Right, PSs are sufficient. You have heard our pronouncements that you cannot have an environment where teaching takes place, learning takes place, and produce good quality outputs if there are fewer teachers. So this government, within the challenges that we have, have decided to derive, drive money from wasteful expenditure of the last seven years. And I'll talk about that when we come to her. And drove that money into education. Two critical elements to improve the pupil-teacher ratio. This government is employing 30,000 teachers. 30,000 teachers. In our first ever budget, 30,000 teachers. In the past, if 2,000 teachers were employed, there was a lot of noise being made. We don't work on noise. We work on getting the job done. 30,000. They will pass through the service, the commission. Employ without segregation. Focus on the quality which brought you to sit today in that chair. No segregation. A rural school is as important as an urban school. Posting, very important. Give the teachers the best. I'll touch on this just about now. Transfers, you've got a message that families have been separated in the last seven plus years. Disjointing, dismembering families. Transferring a teacher wife away from Chama. But the doctor husband remains in Chama. A number of the people affected by this unacceptable policy are teachers. I know. We all know that. You need to address that issue together with Cabinet Office. I think a circular has gone already to address that issue. So you have to work closely with Cabinet Office. Thank you. So, Madam Chimuka, Madam Nawa Chimuka, you have to work with that team there to actualize this. This government doesn't want to make noise. I hear people are saying around, no, the president is making noise, he will get tired. This fellow doesn't get tired to talk about what is right and to follow it through. We want action. The country was messed up already, we know. Now it's action to address those ills. Promotions amongst teachers. It's been an issue. They go for further studies, come back, 
some are not on the payroll, some are sitting home. When a classroom somewhere needs a teacher, a teacher is sitting home, but they're on the payroll. What's going on? PSS, Cabinet Office, now the Commission. This government wants to report progress by media on these issues. Progress report, action list. We want to show a difference. We're here to demonstrate that this country can be run differently but better. Desks, your children, our children, her children, sitting on the floor? No. No. You wake up every morning, you go to that commission, you liaise with your colleagues. One of the issues, where are the Zambian children sitting? They are in class this morning, as we speak. Where are they sitting? On blocks. No. No, madam. No PSs. No cabinet officers. No. That's why we wake up in the morning every day is to address those issues. We have timber here. We don't want to import the desks from el elsewhere. They must be made here. Because one can't say, no, I'm a commission. I just want to make sure the teachers are there, they are paid. No, what are they paid for? They are going to teach a child sitting on the floor. No, no. In the past, you would say, yes, the government said these things but did nothing. This government has addressed that issue. How? CDF. Enhanced CDF which we have grabbed away from corrupt expenditure. I'll come to that, Madam Chiru. We have now brought, taken money closer to the people. Out of the CDF, there is money for these things. There is also money for water. Our agenda, I've said this to the Vice President before, we want to be proud in two, three years' time that there is no government school, there is no government clinic where medical staff, teachers, pupils go to answer the call of nature in a pit latrine. There must be a waterborne toilet. We want to be proud in two years, three years' time to look back and say no one is going to a pit latrine in a public school. It is possible. The money is there now. But all of us working together, State House, Vice President's Office, your commission, PS, Cabinet, that is our job. We have gotten to mediocrity as a country to mean normal. Normal means mediocrity. No. First year, UPND budget, there has to be a connection to change. Zambians want to see change. You can do it. We can do it. Madam Chirwa, you are a product of the Drug Enforcement Commission. You spent many years there before you went to the FIC. You were bred by that institution. You know the challenges of that institution. You know what went wrong in that institution. You know. You know what is right. With the added experience of the Financial Intelligence Center, you are also grounded in terms of training, qualifications. Basic training does help a lot. 
in your profession, in our profession, what is wrong is wrong. There is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. I'm following what's going on in social media. People are debating, no, this is uh, ethnic victimization, fight against corruption, no, this is, uh, you know, getting at PS, at PF, sorry. No, it's none of that. What is there is that what is wrong is wrong. Taking away money that belongs to public, to the public, it is wrong. If the chief executive of the Drug Enforcement Commission sees a gray area, that this may be wrong, this may be right, maybe sits in the middle, there is no middle ground. Taking away resources from the child for us to buy a desk. As you sit, you two are partners. Being sworn in today, you are serious partners. It is the duty of Madam Chirwa to make sure that money meant for desks through CDF is not taken by click. I return to that terminology, a click. They have now started fighting back. They are behaving like uh, what happens in the, our communities. Somebody steals from a widow selling at a market. They run away. They are chased. As the distance away from the point of stealing increases, they start pointing in front and say, Kawalala, Kawalala, in front. That's what's happened. The clique now is employing media. I want to talk to the colleagues in the media. To generate stories, diverting our attention away from following up money that belongs to the public by shouting, Kawalala, Kawalala. For the international media, Kawala in our language means, a local language, Nyanja, means a thief. I'm conscious that today, whatever you say is global. Please, we should not fall for that. Let us agree as a nation, Madam Vice President, corruption theft is wrong. There's no middle ground. Diverting attention, the clique is employing people all over, even new officers, new ministers, new permanent secretaries, teaching you the ways how to siphon money from the public. Mary, Madam Chirwa, those are your clients. <laughs> from the old order in the new order now. I'm following, I'm listening. Just a few days ago, somebody in Eastern Province, they have heard our message of anti-corruption. They concoct a tender process to award a tender to the clique at huge prices. Minister of Justice, we spoke. We are living with contracts that were signed by the lawyers who are supposed to represent citizens and protect citizens and putting clauses in there that are penalizing taking money from citizens. Penalty clauses. Government gives a contract to a supplier. The supplier does not put any money in there, there is a clause for a down payment, 20%. If the contract is 20 million, sorry, 100 million dollars, the down payment is 20 million dollars, which means the people of Zambia are financing the supply, technically, financial. That's what it means. Where is the risk to the supplier? Isn't part of giving a contract to assess financial capacity, working capital? In the last seven years, it became a tradition that the contracting officers, controlling officers in the ministries at finance were colluding with lawyers and justice to steal from the people. 
and you put another cross, $100 million contract, down payment 20%, it means $20 million. No work has been done. Immediately, $20 million is invoiced. Government has no money. It has to attend to teachers. It has to attend to other things, nurses. Government pays $10 million. In that $20 million invoice, then justice. Put a clause that provides for penal interest charges. Government pays $10 million. When it hasn't, it's still looking for $10 million to make $20 million down payment, advance payment, government is billed penalty charges. And there was an attorney general there, a corner man, a corner. No, no. Then in penalties alone, the government is billed that hypothetical contract over years, $52 million over time. What is the job of the Attorney General? What's the job of the Minister of Justice? Is to protect citizens. You expect me to be afraid as president to say no to that. And you want to start calling me names? Call me more names. I will be relentless. Even if I stand alone, even if you threaten pulling down this government, it's not me you are pulling down. You are pulling down the people of Zambia. Absolute no iota of fear at all. So Attorney General Justice Ministry support Madam Mary Chirwa, support ACC, support DPP, support those institutions. Don't collude with them. As is the case is clear now, we have to review those contracts. Because Vice President, that domestic debt you hear is six, seven billion dollars almost of domestic debt. A lot of it sits there as penalties from our own money. Now, I went to school eh? and I was educated by the citizens. You have to work out my gray matter, my brain first, the way it was trained, for me to agree to such conduct. The fact that there's a contract signed there, approved by Attorney General, a government lawyer, and these lawyers were placed in the ministries, willy-nilly approving contracts, they're also colluding. You're making her job a bit difficult, because when the contract is there, it assumes everything is okay. If you are not trained properly, you say, no, but the contract is here. But how, was that contract protecting citizens? No. So most of that six, seven billion dollars, Vice President, is arising from penalties from our own money. And when we go for such issues, no, this is against PF. I corner. Did you steal for PF? This fight against corruption knows no PF. It only knows corrupt people. And that goes for people in business. I come from business. I've been talking to colleagues in there that you were conniving to steal from citizens. Are you surprised you are not paid today? That's why they're not being paid. Because the economy was racked in 20, from 2016, 7% down to minus. You don't have to be educated in finance to understand what was happening. That's why meal allowances for students were withdrawn, because there was no more any money in the coffers. It was siphoned. Debt was going up because of corruption and theft. I've said it before. Two, three months we have now established the bad news for the corrupt. We have established exactly what was the pattern in there. So even us journalists, when we are asked to run stories covering people who have taken money from you, that's why your pay is low. If they did not steal the money, you probably would be paid better. Connect these two things. Mill allowances were withdrawn because the money was gone. There was no free education. We have restored it. Where are we getting the money? 
by taking it away from thieves. We must stand together as a nation on this matter. I can assure you, if we relax on the fight against corruption, if we don't support Madam Mary Chirwa here, we are damaging ourselves and the economy will remain down there. No matter how much work we do on the economic investment side, all that will go down the drain on the consumption side. Secretary of the Cabinet, support this lady. Finance, support this lady and her team. All of us, State House, advisors in State House, support this lady. Security, support this lady. There are not many like her left. For the last 10 years, people got polluted all over the shop. There are not many like her. You have our support, madam. If we do not stand together against corruption, seven years of a leaking bucket, no matter how much water we pour, I used to say it in the opposition, I've now seen it. The bucket will not fill. The water will continue leaking. And we won't support the CDF. We won't support paying retirees, which we have done. First time, 20 years, retirees have not been paid. Check out the Bloomberg report. For the first time in 17 years, the Kwacha gained against the dollar. First time in 17 years, from 2005. That's not by chance. It's these measures we're putting in place. I hear the debates going on. We've got too much to be used to disorder. We try and bring order, noise. Who is driving that, that noise? A small clique of beneficiaries. This country cannot work. 18 million people. Me, I'm a woman, I'm a wife, married to 18 million husbands. I cannot accept a situation that I allow money taken away from my 18 million husbands only to a small clique of less than 10 families. South Africa grappling with that issue. We must do that. And we should do it to win, not to try, no. Your teachers want enhanced pay once they become PhD holders. If we don't fight corruption, if you don't support her, we can't increase the salaries of that PhD holder. It's as simple as that. Why is there a problem here? Because the clique had invested in directing opinion, social media, some pages, print media. Even you who got something, let me remind you, you are getting pittance. They are getting millions and billions of dollars. You are getting pittance. How is it that after 2016 elections, watch the cave, from 2006, the economy was going up, 2011, it starts flattening, cave, 2016, it just drops. This is exactly what happened, free for all. Let us support these colleagues. Let us support cabinet office. Let us support education. Let us support each other. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. There's no middle ground. It doesn't happen. Have you heard a judge hearing a case and says, I'm making a ruling on this matter before me, and the ruling is that it's neutral? I don't know the lawyers are here. Are there rulings like that? But why is the country want to move in a neutral position on clear matters? So, Madam Chirwa, 
There's a lot, you know. Let's get going. Tomorrow I'm leaving. I decided to do this swearing in. Even giving you an extra day to get on with the job is good enough. Call a meeting of your staff there. There are good people there, but some got compromised over the years. Propose the changes you want and we'll support you. Changes are not to victimize anybody. Changes are to improve the operations. I think I've said enough. There's no sacred cow, none. But we must not start shouting kawala la kawala la when we are about to succeed. Congratulations once more to you two distinguished ladies. Country expects a lot from you, from us. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. This marks uh, the end of the swearing-in ceremony. We shall close with a national anthem, and thereafter, Mr. President may have a photo session with the just sworn in senior government officials.